Welcome friends to another edition of Adult Arts and Crafts from the Warren County Library. My name is Mary Ellen and today I'm going to talk to you about watercolor brush pens and how to use them. So what we're going to do today is do some fall leaf painting and the uh, wind has been around taking down a lot of leaves so uh, I hope you could find one to trace and copy and a sketch for yourself and um, we're gonna have a lot of fun today. So I hope you're able to join me and uh, have some fun. So uh, I'm somebody who buys a lot of supplies when I see new things come out on the market and I did have some watercolor brush pens, but I didn't really start using them until a friend gifted me some for my birthday at the end of September. And after taking uh, a couple of online tutorials, I was off to the races. So I hope that you enjoy doing this as much as I do and find out how fun it is and how different it is than painting with watercolor paints. The brush pens are fine, they're full of color and the detail's amazing. So let's get started. I'm gonna go right down onto the table and we're going to begin. If you have any questions or comments, I will try very hard to get back to you um, it's hard for me to see them while I'm working on the table, but I'll do my best with you. I will also come back and answer any questions later that you might have. All right, so let's get started. First, I'm gonna show you some things that I have done with the watercolor brush pens uh, on leaves. And these are things that might uh, inspire you and give you an idea what you might want to try. So these are all different leaves that I've tried uh, with the pens. And something I'm, I'm doing is making some cards. So know if you want to make a card, these are a perfect size. So it's what we'll be, I'll be explaining to you today. Here's one that I wanted to look a little distressed. So you can see I kind of flung some extra paint on there just to give them some spots and some interest. So it looks like it's kind of uh, drying up a little bit. Here's a leaf that I copied from one that I saw online. And it is cool because it's got that little shadow behind it. So it gives it a little bit of a 3D effect. That might be something you want to try. And these as well were ones that I've tried by leaving the veins white because I find that a lot of my uh, leaves actually have pale yellow veinage or pale green veinage. So, you know, it's very possible that um, you wanna leave them this way. And it's a little more difficult, so I'll just say we should start the other way first. Okay, so I'm gonna move this to the side. And for a second, I'm just gonna talk about supplies. The supplies that we're using for this, um, 140 pound weight paper. I've just used this Canson watercolor paper. You can get it anywhere, including Walmart or any of the art supply stores. And this weight is, is great for using with these pens. So I wanted to give you that as a, a, an option. Um, what I like to do with that is I like to tape the paper down to a piece of cardboard or something that's a little bit firm so that when it is wet and it dries, it'll become flat again if it is uh, taped down in that fashion. This is what we're gonna to paint today. In terms of supplies, I wanna show you the paint brushes, uh, the watercolor brushes, because you might have a different brand all of these brands work very well. Um, one that is very popular is the Tombow brand. And here I can, if you can see, I hope the camera's catching the title of it. What's interesting about the Tombow pens is you have the brush tip. And you can see there that that's a brush tip. And on the other end, you have a bullet point. It's not totally fine, but it does help sometimes to have a tip that's different. So it's very nice to have some of these pens and they do come in sets of 10 or you can buy them singly. If you know which color you like, you could actually go into Michael's and buy just one color at a time if you wish. 
Um, the Chromatech pens are the other ones that I'm going to show you. And I gotta say, these are the most beautiful, juicy, vibrant colors. So uh, they're the ones that I received as a gift. Thank you so much, Jenny, for my gift. And I've been really going to town painting with these water brush pens. So I haven't seen them in the store. I've seen them only online. So there's the name if anybody is interested. What I found works for me is keeping light colors in separate jars. So when I want to pick a yellow, for instance, I can head right for that jar and I can see the light ones and the pale ones and the bright ones and choose which one I like. So that's how I'm organizing my pens. Something you might want to have on the side, um, besides your, your little container of water, you have water in your pen, but I also like to have some water in a container. And you have either paper towel or some terry. If you're interested in not using up paper, the terry will wash nicely in the washing machine. And I also keep some cotton swabs next to me. Um, some Q-tips, some cotton. If you were to get something on the paper in a spot that you don't want, make a little mistake, you could actually clean it off before it here adheres fully to the paper. So I'm putting that on the side as well as one of the things I keep. Um, something that I am using now is a blending palette. When I use it in this program, I'll show you how to make your own. And one of the things I would say is to make yourself some patterns. So how would you make some leaf patterns? You could either use leaves from outside or there are so many leaves online. You can actually look up watercolored leaves and you can copy from these. That's perfectly fine to do. Um, this is for your own purposes and for learning and it's very, very helpful sometimes just to copy someone else's work. So there's an option for you. Pinterest has many leaves. Google has all kinds of leaves. Uh, here's a real leaf that I used. You can see now it's dried up but I used a real leaf. You could literally trace a real leaf to make the leaf for this pattern. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I have found was after I make a drawing of a leaf and I like it, I have saved myself a traceable copy of that leaf because I knew I wanted to make a series of cards. So I could sit down and trace a leaf and not have to draw it right from the beginning to end, and I'd be ready to make the next leaf. So there's an option for you too, that if you're gonna make more than one, save your leaf, trace it, do the work once, and then you can trace it and use it again and again. All right, so I think that's all the background I need to give you on this, and we can get, we can get painting. So here's the leaf that I'm, we're gonna to paint today. I did put a little lettering on here, and if you stay to the end, I will also show you how I put the lettering on there. I don't know how long I should stay and paint for you because, you know, I could do it all day long, but I will try to be brief and just show you the basics. So to make this particular leaf, I had drawn it with pencil. I saved one of those patterns, and then uh, I should say, if you have a uh, 9 by 11 uh watercolor paper and you cut it into four pieces this is the size you come out with so these are six by four and a half and you can get four pieces like this out of one sheet of your watercolor paper so that's uh, a very very um, frugal way to use it and you have plenty of paper uh, four leaves out of one sheet of paper so what I've done is I have drawn the traced the leaf and I've traced it here onto uh, this watercolor paper. And what I'm going to do in front of you is I'm gonna color in some areas with the watercolor pen, and then I'm gonna come back with the water and I'm gonna energize that paint and show you how those colors will spread and blend. And then I'll show you my blending tool as well that you can make for yourself. If, you've, if you're not doing a lot of drawing and you're not comfortable with um, starting with something that um, 
with that many parts in it. You could do a very simple leaf like this. This is a leaf that Chromatech uh, showed online where you could use perhaps even three or four colors only and draw the colors in and blend them and have it done. Of course, I like using all the, all the colors I can, so I'm gonna show you with a little bit more color than that. Someone asked me about using watercolor pencils, and so I tried the same leaf in watercolor pencils, and you can see they're not nearly as vibrant as you get from the dyes and the inks in the pens. So just wanted to, you know, show them that, that uh, what we're doing here with the pens is quite, quite vibrant. So I think what I'll do is probably, you know, put this one nearby, you can't see a lot of the same thing on the camera. Maybe I'll just put it on the side for myself and I'll try to paint it in the same way that I did that one. So how about I just put it like this? And so you can see, I'm gonna grab some of these same colors and I'm gonna, I'm going to insert them over here. I'm gonna put some glasses on so I can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm looking for an orange, a red, a yellow. So let me just grab some randomly. I hope that I can do this well enough for you to see. Let me grab some of those Chromatex pens that are so beautiful. Now I'm going to start, and I would recommend you start with the paler colors first. Sometimes a color like red could be so, so intense that it takes over the picture. So uh, let's see, I'm going to just put some, some yellow in here. Let me put some yellow on this side because it will blend nicely. And you see that I don't have to be super, super careful about where I'm putting that color when it's directly out of the pen. Uh, try uh, one of the Tombows to see what, what color I get out of that. So this, this yellow is a little bit more orange, so that might look nice up there. Now, if you had the Tombow pen, you could use uh, this edge, could be drawn in very carefully, and you'll have a nice point showing there. So let's get some things that are a little bit more bold. Get another orange, there's a green. And it's a little tricky for me to, to paint it right in front of you. I'm a little bit nervous about it, but you'll be forgiving when you see what a nice job these pens do. Now, I think I might put a little bit of green in here. Now you could go as far as you like with these pens and then start energizing them with the water, or you could paint the whole thing in with the pens. Um, First, let's see, was this, uh, this was an orange. I'm gonna grab a red. The reds are just so intensely beautiful, but they can take over things. So I think I'll put some red just up in this corner. And I have to be very careful. These have such a beautiful fine tip, but it might take you some time to get used to painting with that tip because if you, want a sharp line, as in any brush, you're going to push down very lightly. If you want a thick line, if you push down harder, you get a thick line. So I hope you understand what I mean by that. I'm gonna leave these pens right next to me so I can use them again. And I should mention the, the pens that hold the water come in different tip sizes as well. You can have a a uh, broad flat tip like this. You can have a fine tip like this. And this is the one I've been using the most. It's got a very nice springing back tip. Um, all you do is unscrew it, take it to your sink and fill it up with water. Uh, my tip would be if you have a water softener, especially a water softener that uses salt products, use your potable water instead in the brush. Know that salt always does react with water 
and that might change the quality of your painting. So if you have potable water instead, that means the water that you would drink with, that's the water that I would use. Now, you could squeeze this pen, and I'll, I'll squeeze it right here, and you can see that a full drop of water has fallen out of the pen. So I could paint with that, but to my mind, that's too much water. So you see, I, I just kind of picked some of it up and moved it. But what you can also do is dip into your water jar and just wet, wet the tip so you're not over watering your painting. Do you see how that orange just blended itself right up into the yellow? Uh, that's the trick with these pens. They really, really do so much of the work for you. Part of it has to do with the fact that you have good paper. You have the uh, 140 pound watercolor paper. It's not the really super, super expensive paper, but it's also a good quality watercolor paper that can handle water sitting on it. So I'm going to, let's see, go into this orange over here. Now I can sit and do this for hours on end because I find this very relaxing. You can, do you see here, I've just yellow. I can drag this orange over into the yellow if I wanna have a little bit of, of uh, a shading in there. Let's bring this green down. So you basically can mix your colors right on the piece that you're working on. And I frankly think that uh, these leaf shapes are perfect for beginners because each little section can be handled separately and then you can uh, draw them together with the water. So let me get up here and here we have this really nice bright orange up here and I'm going to try to make this tip neat. So I'm slowing down and trying not to talk while I'm doing it. Now this red will really, really blend into the colors around it. Now you might want to decide how much water you want to add because this will flow. Until I touch the water next to it, it won't flow. I see I just got some water where I don't want it, so that's why I'm using that pad. So here we go. I will let it touch this yellow that's next to it and let it flow right into it. You see that we're already creating very simply this leaf here. Now I'll keep painting this leaf for a while and then I will pull out a, uh, a dry one and show you how I put the, the veins on it. So let's see, what do we need? So I pretty much feel that on these leaves you need orange, you need brown, you need red, you need green. So I've pretty much just grabbed a collection of those colors and have them here next to me, but you could you could go to town with it any way uh, it appeals to you to do your leaf. Um, some of the leaves are all one color. Um, let me see what else. What other color can I grab? I can grab a nice uh, a brown shade, maybe a very bright green, and see. You see why I separate the colors because it's very hard for me to keep up with what do I want. There's a very bright green with the Chromatech. I have to say the Chromatech colors are very, very bright. I think I'm going to try a, a brown in here and think about, you know, what the brown might blend into nicely. I think I'll try some, some green next to it. Let's see. And what do we want? right in this in this zone. I think I might have a little bit of green. I might have a little bit of brown. And I might try a little bit of yellow right in the same section and, and experiment with how that looks. I see this red over here is really wet, so I'm just gonna pull some of that red off. Okay. You see, I'm finding I like to dip the brush 
in the water. I was squeezing the pen for it, which works very, very well if you are, say, uh, painting outside uh, when the weather's nice and you could sit on your front porch and do a painting, or maybe even sitting in the living room at night in a chair, you might want to just squeeze the brush to get the uh, paint energized. I kind of feel like I have found more control with it if I'm dipping it into the water. So you might find that something has traveled a little bit too much. That one may have traveled a little bit too much for you. I might add some color up there. And while it's wet, what I found was you don't want to draw too much with the pen onto the wet area. You want to let it dry and then you can come back and keep doing more and more and more on that zone. You almost can't make a mistake. I'll even show you how you can fix a mistake. I'll just drag this color around to, uh, there's an awful lot of yellow in this area. So this is a, uh, actually, let me just do some of this just so I feel there's a little bit more done. But I think you got a pretty good idea of how this works and it's really pretty amazing. I'm gonna to talk to you now about the blending palette. With the blending palette, you can, and I got I got one in, a, in one of my sets of um, Tombow pens. What came in it was called a blending palette. I didn't even know what it was. And basically, um, it's just a piece of paper that's been laminated with plastic. So what you can do with that is you can draw with your pen on it and then you can either blend another color into it. We'll just put another color here. Let's see, I'll grab one of this lovely red and put this here. I hope that you can see, I think it's showing well on the camera. And if I wanna add some a color to an area that is already wet, I'm gonna move my water. I don't wanna spill my water on top of my work. That would be a disaster. So here's the palette. I'm wetting the pen. It's hard to, to see everything at once. I'm gonna go into this green and then you can see that I can add the green just like you would from a paint palette. So if I want to make a yellow green that I don't have, I can mix the two together right here and I can add that and I think I'll just put it right here in this little section right here. So you can see that those are those two colors mixed together. If I'm afraid to put too much red into something, I can grab just a little bit of red and touch it in. And you see, as I do that, I'm just adding that in slowly and it's not quite as bold as when you've drawn it on dry. So this is a way to do it. Now, what if you don't have one of these palettes? Well, you don't really need one of these palettes. Um, if you have the opportunity to have contact paper, you can put contact paper on a piece of paper. You can, if you have, um, a um, laminating machine, you can laminate a piece of plastic right onto a piece of paper, which is what I did here. We have a laminating machine at work. And if you don't, if you don't have that, you could use freezer paper that is plastic on one side and that works wonderfully well. Um, if you have none of those things, take a piece of paper and put it inside a baggie. You have the same thing going on here. So let me move this palette away so you can see. I can take that pen, now it doesn't show you as brightly, that's why I say put a piece of paper in there. And then when I come to it here, you see that I can add that color right onto my leaf. Well, my leaf looks a little bit wild and crazy, but I am kind of just doing this quickly um, without a plan of any kind, and I am a bit of a planner. 
but I'm sure you'll forgive me for that and understand that, you know, it's kind of hard for me to do this while, while I'm talking and trying to concentrate at the same time. But as you can see, I'm building a leaf that looks very painterly. If you want your paint to be pale, just put less of the marker and it will be very pale and very beautiful. And before you put your veins or your details on there, I would say to let this dry completely. Here's a trick too. When I was talking about uh, taping this down onto a piece of cardboard, what I've done with this piece of cardboard is I put a piece of contact paper on the cardboard first so that the water from my watercolor won't seep into the one behind it. So I can actually blend right on the piece of cardboard that I have. So you see if I can grab that paint, I'm gonna add a little water to it so you can see, I can grab that paint as a blender right there on my, and I think contact paper is very easy to find. I think you can find it even over at the Family Dollar um, outlet and you certainly can get it in any uh, Walmart. I don't know if the supermarket has it, but it is easy to find. So, so that's the basics on how you're gonna paint this leaf. And I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm going to grab another one here. And I'll give you another, another idea one. So this was one that I, uh, a leaf that I saw online and I painted it and didn't put the details in yet on this one. And I just like the way it looked so much that I'm not gonna put any details on it. But I thought, well, let me try it again and put some veining on. So you can see here, with those pens, you can put a very fine veining on. You could also, if you wanted to use, um, you know, colored pencils to put your fine veining on if you find difficulty doing the veining and this one I decided to put little edges on and I used this uh, regular the water pen and by dipping it into the color and just dotting along the edge you gave it it gave it this nice uh, serrated look so put them to the side so here's a um, here's the leaf that is dry and you can see that it looks very close to what I had just done for you live. Um, you could at this point come back once it's dry and if you don't like something on it, you could wet it, you could add to it, you could actually sop some of it up and change the color a little bit if you want. But if you wanted to now put the veins on it, you could use uh, either kind of pen. Uh, I'm going to see what this brown, if this brown even shows up hardly shows up on here. So that's not gonna do much for you. I'm gonna get a darker color. Um, obviously the, the blunt tip like this is a lot easier to control and maybe it's too heavy a line so I could just do it, do it um, softly. Interestingly, most leaves have their veins all come together and join in the same spot which is right here. So it, they also come out to where the points are in the leaves. So if you have painted the sections as I had it drawn, you can see how you might add these veins and some of them might require more than others. Here's one that has to come right to the same point. And this is pretty much how I do it. I can come back with a darker pen at some point if I feel the necessity. But you can see how it's done. Not really uh, too difficult. And by knowing that you're going to want to connect it to where the, the points are on the edge of your leaf makes it easier. Interestingly, if I 
do a little bit of color here and then come back with my water pen. I'm gonna stick it in the water. I hope I did this in front of you so you could see. I'm sorry, it's very hard for me to tell. Um, I think, I don't know if there's a, any questions. Let me water, let me wet this brush. Um, they have very nice sharp point. Um, when you come here and wet it, you'll get a nice uh, line that's not quite as dark because you've added water to it. So you could do that. Now, interestingly, I have done this before on several of these leaves and I might come back later and say, gee, I don't really like the way uh, this one looks. So so what will, what will I do about this one didn't come out the way I wanted? I can just come back with water and I can literally wash it away. Isn't that interesting? Now, some of the brown tone that's in there will color that area. I'll do it again with another one. Also, um, let me grab a, real, a regular paintbrush. At this point, if you wanna remove something that you did, sometimes you wanna use a regular paintbrush that you could scrub with a little bit better. So let's just grab another one for the heck of it and say, gee, I don't like the way um, I don't like the way this one looks. Even though I, I don't really have a problem with it, I'm going to come back and I'm going to scrub it away. And I think that's so cool that these pens can be altered. What you've done with them can be altered. It's a little piece of something on there. And I don't want to draw on there again until it dries. But I had a leaf that I didn't like anything that I did in terms of the veinage came back and colored and removed it all with this uh, with water and it kind of softened the whole tone of the leaf by adding that brown color to it. So I thought that that's something that's worth sharing with you and for someone certainly who's timid about uh, drawing and hasn't tried it yet at all, um, very interesting that you have the control. Say I, I want to change something on this leaf. If you're you know, a picky person like me, you might get up the next day and go, wow, I didn't really like that area. So instead of just being able to add colors, you can take colors away. And that's not something that you normally do uh, with watercolor. So I hope that that's helpful to you uh, to know that you can do that. And let's see, is there anything else here I need to show you? I'm not sure, I think we're in, I think I'm in pretty good shape with the notes. Let's see, that I have given myself. Um, I'll bring the camera back up to myself and be able to check if there are any questions here. Let's hope I can see questions. I can see there's some people here, let's see. Some people are watching. Thank you so much. A couple people said they like my programs. Um, yes, corn and wear could be used as a palette, um, but on this, it seems that the plastic coating is what helps these um, these pe these pens really uh, drop some color there that you can come back with water and grab them up again. Um, ceramic is great for regular watercolor. Something about a plastic coating. I had uh, bought something recently with, that had a plastic coating on the packaging, and I thought, wow, someone could use that even for a palette. So um, if there aren't any big questions, I'd just like to invite you to make a leaf and in in the idea that i had was that it's perfect for thanksgiving and i'm hoping you can think of someone that you normally wouldn't say thank you to and make them a card and surprise them with a thanks maybe it's your gas attendant maybe it's the checker in the supermarket um everybody's a valuable employee right now I can tell you that working in the library, we do expose ourselves to uh, a lot of germs. And, oh, Katie, you missed the beginning of the program. The markers that I was using, I used two kinds here. I used Chromatech, Chromatech markers. I hope it's, it's probably, you probably can see it only backwards. It's C-H-R-O-M-A-T-E-K. And I used Tombow pens. Um, I also have some King Art. I ha there are many brands. I should mention that I did see a set of uh, Crayola brand in Target in a nice tin 
for $14.99. I haven't tried them. I did not buy them, but uh, all of these water brush pens kind of do the same thing. So, you know, they're fine for working with kids as well. You can wipe them up well. I can tell you that the, um, the terry cloth, cloth towel that I use to dip my brush onto, I just throw it in the wash and it comes off. I don't see anything here staining of any kind. So it could be something you do, but frankly, um, they're made well enough to be adult products, sharp tips. You can do fine designs. If you are a fabulous artist, I say try it. Um, these were watercolor markers. So you use, if you can come back and watch this video again, if you've totally missed a good portion of it, all you're doing is you are drawing with the marker on the, on the, I'm trying to find it here. You're drawing with the marker onto your pattern and you're coming back with a wet brush. It could be a brush that holds water inside or it could be just a brush that you dipped into water and you're energizing that paint. And when you do that, let's see how wet this is. This is the one I just did in front of you. It will blend really beautifully into the other colors. I think they're really a fabulous find and I would say what a fabulous gift if you're thinking of something for someone for Christmas. But um, any other questions? Um, I'm so glad to see questions. I would love to see if anyone makes a leaf. If you'd like to come back to this page and post a picture of it, that would be fabulous. But I want to say I thank you for coming. I want you to thank someone with one of these cards. I plan to send some out myself. That's why I'm working on them like crazy. Thanksgiving is coming, but you can thank people any day of the week. So thank you for coming to the library program. I really appreciate your visits. I hope to see you next month when I have another program for adults from the Warren County Library. Thanks so much. Have a good afternoon.